Hello, this is Derek Sherinian, and you're listening to The Prodcast. Welcome back to The Prodcast. My name is Dario. I'm your host, as always, and as you already heard, with me through Zoom today is Derek Shurinian. Um, great to have you on the show. I hope you're doing well over there. Hi, hey, Dario. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm doing okay, hanging in there like everyone else, just trying to make the, the best of these strange times. All right. That, that sounds okay so far. Um, we like to start our show with a little um, section that we call What's in Your Walkman. Now, I know that you've um, been kn known to be someone who, who is not that much into more like modern artists or something like that. In, in your pre previous interviews, I've read um, that, that you, you don't listen to that much new music. But um, you can also suggest any, anything else that you've been listening to um, lately uh, for our playlist that we will, um, yeah, that's accompanying this episode, actually. Is there anything you want to um, recommend the listeners? I recommend listening to the whole body of work of Alan Holdsworth. Okay, that, that that's that's an amazing recommendation. Actually, I've never done start it. Start there. Let's start <laughs> there, and then we can talk after that. <laughs> okay, I've I've never done it, but I was fortunate enough to to see him live once in Stuttgart in Jazz Club Bix. It was an amazing concert, obviously. Oh, I um, bet, I bet. <laughs> but I, yeah, I guess that would be that would would be a project for for another lockdown or something. Start with <laughs> I, I would start with his earlier works. Uh, listen to his work with Tony Williams' Lifetime, and then uh, with Bill Bruford, and then UK, and then his solo albums. All right. That's uh, a, a, lo a lot to catch up, I guess. Um, my, my quick uh, three recommendations uh, this week would be um, another uh, a modern uh, prog fusion soul fusion um band from france called blue wave quartet they put out their solo um their solo their debut ep out this, uh earlier this year um in february and i'm gonna put this the track weather disturbances on the playlist the other one would be a munich based um progressive death metal band that have a track called non-construct from the last album vas hermeticum from 2017 that's pretty pretty um piano um driven which i thought was really cool i saw them two days ago live again here in munich and uh the piano m m was kind of the connection i made with derek shrinian's music here and my third recommendation would be from the same year as my favorite Der derek shrinian album um, which was um, Black Utopia, and I on the same day um, I bought Black Utopia. I bought Pagan's Mind, uh, the second Pagan's Mind album, um, Celestial Entrance, and the, the first song Through Osiris Eyes. When I was listening to Black Utopia again, I was kind of reminded of that. I was a little bit nostalgic. Um, so yeah, that was some some great nostalgia going on there, preparing for this Ooh. interview. But now, of course, um, we do have a new Derek Shurinian album coming out uh, through Inside Out Music, which is called The Phoenix. And it is your first uh, solo album since quite some time, nine years, I think. Last one was Oceana. Um, so what have you been up to in the meantime? Oh, just been staying... Uh staying busy in the last nine years. I mean, I've done a lot of different stuff, black country communion. Uh, we started sons of Apollo in 2016 and I just felt, you know, after nine years, I felt an urge to, to do a new solo record. So I made a couple phone calls, got a new solo deal called up Simon Phillips about 18 months ago. And over about a week period of time, we wrote the majority of the Phoenix and 
figured out who we were going to invite to play on the guitars. And I finished up all the overdubs after uh, the lockdown in February. And so it took about three months to finish everything up. And we're very excited about this release. I, I definitely feel this is my best record. I've had nine years to uh, store up ideas and I'm a lot stronger of a player, writer and producer from since 2011. So I'm very proud of this release and I think it stands up with the best of any of the instrumental records that have ever come out. Uh, yeah, that's uh, quite something there. And um, uh, also I want to um, ask you how, um, yeah, it was not the first time that you collaborated with Simon Phillips on the drums and as a co-producer. Um, Over the years, there have, have has been uh, some more some other um, extraordinary drummers you 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 collaborated with. Um, so is is there any any significant difference between let's say um, riding with and for Simon Phillips on the drums, or with Virgil Donati for for example? Um, Well, it's a different, it's a definitely different sound. Virgil and I uh, have a great chemistry as well. And all of the stuff that we wrote for Planet X and my first solo record, I mean, it's, that's a totally unique killer sound, you know, in itself. And it's totally different from what I do with Simon. So it's very hard to uh, compare with Simon. It's more fusion. It's more down to earth. And with Virgil, it's exactly what the name of the band is. It's like from another world. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, you've been busy with, with uh, Sons of Apollo in the last years. You already mentioned that. And of course, Mike Portnoy is uh, playing the drums there. Um, so in the last years when you came up with, um, or, or yeah, last year when, when you were maybe starting to gather ideas for your new solo album, um, or when you come up with ideas in general, do you, do you feel right away which direction is, it's going to be, if it's going to, with which project it, it's going to fit? Yeah, I mean... It, it kind of works itself out in the end. It all comes down to if it's going to be a vocal tune or an instrumental. I mean, if it's instrumental, it will definitely go on my solo. So it just depends on how I want to approach the song. But it always starts with a riff, you know, and I just I try to just every day write a little bit. And, and add to it and keep storing it up. And if you do that every day, it adds up. And then as soon as you know it, you have an album. <laughs> it sounds, uh, sounds relatively easy, but I'm pretty sure it isn't. Oh, no, it's, it's definitely not. You know, it takes a lot of work. And there's some times where I'll sit and write three sections to a song. And there's times where I'll take four days to finish um, one song you never know when the inspiration is coming but i find that the more i go into the studio and treat it like a job and not just wait for the inspiration to come from from the gods you know you have to kind of work it a little bit too because sometimes after uh spending time on it you might get frustrated but after 45 minutes then the idea might hit you so you really just need to keep working at it um Yeah, you, you you mentioned that that you it depends on if you want to go uh, with the, if the song would end up with 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 vocals or not. Um, but I think especially the Phoenix as as a as an album is uh, quite diverse in in itself. Um, so one track that stood out a little bit because it's so uh, piano. Um, Uh, focused is uh i think it was the fourth track in the middle dragonfly dragonfly yes, yes. Um you also released that as a as the second single i think it was um and and that kind of uh piano centered um stuff reminded me a little bit of uh tigran hamasian and uh, he also has a new solo album out uh 
lately. I think it was released last month. And so I wanted to ask you if you heard of Tigran and if that kind of style was an influence on that. Well, I have heard of Tigran and I think he's fantastic. And I'm really, uh, I, I've become a fan of his. But what's very interesting, if you listen to Tigran, a lot of his sound, it's very much like Planet X, the a lot of the patterns and cool odd time stuff, but he's adapted it for piano. And I think it's really great what he's doing. So I'm a fan. I think he's one of the, the uh, cool new artists out there that I really like. That's uh, great. Yeah, I, I love his stuff as well. Uh, and I like that he's Armenian too, so that's awesome. Ah, yeah, right. <laughs> There's this connection as well. Um yeah, it, it is an instrumental album, and um, as all of your um, solo albums have been, with some small exceptions, and there's also an, one exception on this album, and that is uh, the song Them Changes, which is obviously a cover version, and you have your uh, Black Country Communion um, buddy... <laughs> uh, Joe Bonemassa uh, singing there. So, um, yeah, how, how did this end up uh, on, on, on the record? Well, I knew Joe was going to play on the record, and I felt that it would be a waste to have him and not have him sing a song. So we were talking, and he knows my history with, he knew of my history with Buddy Miles. So he suggested them changes, and I thought it was a great idea because I used to love playing that song. Buddy Miles was my first gig ever and that was his big hit so we used to play that every night and <laughs> it's great it brings back great memories for me awesome um and and you, you i i, I don't know I, i think in the end it it does fit somehow but did, didn't you have any like concerns that it wouldn't fit with yeah, the rest it's an of the oddball, material it's the oddball <laughs> track i mean it doesn't it's the one vocal track but where it does blend in is the jam sections and the absolutely, end yeah. is we, we take off and so that absolutely fits with the rest of it and you know it's all the it serves a purpose you know it shows my versatility as a player and a writer that i can adapt as a chameleon with no matter who the guitarist is whether it's vi uh bonamassa zach or uh any of them I, I trade solos. It doesn't matter who they are. I feel comfortable trading with all of them. And my style, no matter what style I play, you can tell that it's Derek Sherinian. And that's the most important thing to me is having that identity as a player. Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, just some, some of your, uh, your guitar guests this time around. And some of them obviously are... Um, Uh, old uh, familiar faces uh, there for, who have played on many of your solo albums like Zach Weil or um, um, yeah, Billy Sheehan, obviously you have uh, collaborated with him as well. I think Bumblefoot is the first time uh, on the solo album with you, but I mean, you, you, you collaborated with him in Sons of Apollo as well. Um, yeah. But uh, Steve Vai and uh, Kiko uh, Lureiro was they they are for for the first time on on a Degarek Shurinian album if I'm not mistaken. That's uh, correct. So how how did this collaboration uh, these collaborations come together? Well, first with uh, Kiko, I've known for a long time, and he became a neighbor of mine about five, six years ago, but we had never collaborated together. So I thought that this would be a great opportunity to write a song with him and feature him on the record. And it was just a great pleasure working with him and writing Pesadello. He has a great um, guitar style and there's a flamenco section in the middle of that song where he just goes off by himself. And I think it just sounds fantastic and i would welcome another opportunity to work with him steve i have known for many years as well in 2017 he asked me to join the generation x tour with zach ingve vi nuno and tosin abasi yeah and so steve and i became closer during that and so when it was time to do the phoenix i asked him if he would uh play on a song that i thought he'd fit great on i sent it to him and he loved it 
and played on the track. And I was really happy with how that turned out. Bumblefoot, what can you say? The guy is amazing, <laughs> and it was really awesome to work with him outside of Sons of Apollo on this. And uh, Simon was very, very impressed with Bumblefoot, so I could see the three of us doing some more work in the future. Oh, that sounds interesting indeed. Um, you, you just, uh, j just one more thing about Kiku. He also um, put out a solo album this year, and I listened to it. It's called Open Source, and I would. Yes. It, it was just released in July, and I would also uh, really recommend it because I thought it was also a really great. Oh, yeah, I haven't album. listened to it yet, but I'm looking forward to listening to it, and I'm sure it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a recommendation from me, from me to you as well. Okay, here. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm gonna add a track to to the to the accompanying playlist from Kiko's solo album as well, um, because I think he deserves it. Um, yeah, you've been in the business for for quite some time now, and um, you're solo debut album was uh planet x in 1999 um and you've you've uh released uh quite some albums in the meantime in these last 20 years um do, do you think do you feel there's a difference uh, releasing instrumental music uh like 20 20 years ago and now Yeah, it's the same. There's no money in it then, and there's no money in it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was... It's no difference. All I know is that I love making these records, and I don't cut any corners. I use the very best musicians in the world, very best equipment, and we put our best foot forward on all of our solo records, but especially on the Phoenix, I think is exceptional. That, that that was a surprisingly short but 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 a very clear answer <laughs> um yeah looking at your discography um and and also uh thinking about the playlist i want to um uh give the listeners to explore your uh, especially your solo discography um leading up and including the phoenix i will obviously include uh the singles for the phoenix for this playlist but i would also love to um sort of comp uh, do a compilation of the of a best of De derek shurinian and okay you ready i'll give you i'll give you uh, a best of i'll go down the, the records yes you have absolutely. to do on the planet x album the atlantis trilogy absolutely. in its entirety Absolutely, I, I, I confirm concur with that. <laughs> okay, then on the Inertia album, I would go with Inertia, the title track. Yes. It's really good. Then next is Black Utopia. I like uh, Sons of Anu. That's awesome with Ingve and Demiola. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> and then Mythology, uh, Day of the Dead with Holdsworth and Zach. Yeah. That middle section solo with Holdsworth is is as good as it gets. Yeah, all right. Blood of the Snake 2006 is next. Blood of the Snake, uh what's on that record that's really good? Uh oh. I actually uh, like The Man with No Name. <laughs> Man with No Name, I love it. It's a vocal tune but it kicks ass, so let's go with that. All right. And then on Molecular Hainosity, the uh There's a trilogy that's with, written with Virgil. It's very Planet X-y. Yes. So it's called Primal. I think it's called... Uh, uh, fuck, I forgot what it's called. Is it Antarctica? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Antarctica trilogy. And then, And then on Oceana, I would say... Um, I don't know. I'll let you pick one. I don't even remember what's on that. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's hard to remember. <laughs> yeah, but you can pick one. But the Phoenix, I can't even tell you. I mean, I love every song on the Phoenix. I think it's great. But if you're going to only pick one, Dragonfly, I think it's great. 
All right, those those are great uh, recommendations, and I think uh, people who who have not who were who aren't familiar with your discography yet uh, get a great overview of what you have been up to uh, with your solo albums in all these years. Um, but in between, especially at the very beginning of uh, the um, the new millennium, uh, you also um, had the two Planet X albums, and um, those were uh, yes. some, those were something special as well. Would you like me to include uh, songs from those albums as well? Yeah, for sure. Uh, whatever ones you think, I like on the second album. I like Moon Babies. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> the title track is great. And then um, on the first Planet X record, all of it is killer. So you can pick whatever. I will do that. And But I'm also super curious if there anything, if, if there's any chance of you guys getting together with Planet X and doing... Uh, well, new, funny, new, funny new you music. should ask. <laughs> I, I had a nice conversation with Virgil last month. And I think we're going to touch base after the beginning of next year and, and have a, a serious conversation about doing something because it's been too long. It's been 20 years. Uh, it'll be 21 years next year since we put out the universe album. And what's amazing is there are so many young musicians that all over the world that weren't even born when we made that record that are planet X fans. There's this underground following for the <laughs> yeah. band that's developed, uh, And a lot of those two records that we made or three records are out of print. So there's a big um, demand within this progressive and instrumental community. And I, I really didn't have any idea uh, of the impact that this band had until, you know, just recently, just reading some of these emails people send and, and postings. And it's like, wow, even um, when I was on tour On the Generation X tour, I was having breakfast with Tosin Abasi, and he was telling me how much he loved Planet X coming up and how you know important of a band that was to him. And I thought that that was really cool. Yeah, that's that's a fun story. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the I I don't I also don't know how why, but yeah, these Planet X albums I always thought and I always hear in this in the scene that they they made a lasting impact. And uh, I mean, well, here's the thing: is we were way ahead of our time, uh, even to this day. I mean, I still haven't heard instrumental music that's sicker than Planet X, and a lot of it I want to give credit to Virgil. I mean, he is just so advanced. Musically, a lot of those polyrhythms and a lot of that harmony is is composed by Virgil, and so I was really learning a lot uh, playing with him. I remember thinking, like when I was playing in in Dream Theater, how technical it was, but then playing with Virgil was like a whole different planet, <laughs> and so I really grew a lot as a player working with with him. Yeah. By the way, did you did you uh, have a chance to listen to Virgil's last uh, solo album? I think it was released uh, at um, very end of 2019. Was um, it the orchestral one? No, no. The was it or the new one, Ru Ruination, with, with the singer oh, and all. I haven't heard that one. The last record I heard from Virgil was his orchestral album, which I was totally blown away with. Yeah, that um, was that, that was, was amazing. That was before, but he has a new one or relatively new one out called Ruination. Uh, I think digitally it has been released at the very end of 2019, and the physical release was at the beginning of this year. Um, oh, okay. And it's uh, I was at first I was a little bit uh, surprised because it's a uh, It's a it's a vocal album, and oh. and I was not sure if I like. Does he sing? No, he no, he, he he's he's got a really good singer. I can't remember his name now. Um, maybe I, I'll find out quickly. Um, anyway, I, at first I was not sure if I like this. Yeah, this Virgil fusion style underneath. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, vocal driven uh or vocal centered uh sound but but in the end it it did work somehow uh, surprisingly enough 
And, okay. Well, um, I will, I'll give it a listen. I'll give it a listen. I'm sure if Virgil wrote it, it's great. <laughs> Absolutely. And I will also uh, include a track in the playlist. I think that's um, that's a cool. Uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be a sick playlist, definitely, <laughs> with all these sick players that that you uh, uh, that that are in the bigger Derek Sherinian musical family, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, with with these uh, in these uh, Corona times, I don't really have to ask you for uh, about any touring plans right now. I guess even even less so than before. Well, the only ones that I do have are the rescheduled Planet X dates in Europe for May 2021. So let's uh, let's see what happens. Let's hope things get back to normal so we can all go enjoy concerts. You know. Did, did, did you just say Planet X? No, we have, um, well, Sons of Apollo, we were on tour and we had to cancel dates because of the lockdown. And so we yeah, right. rescheduled these dates for May 2021. You, I think you just said Planet X. That was a Freudian slip. Oh, I'm sorry. Sons of Apollo. <laughs> My bad. I'm sorry. I, I get confused. No worries. No Sons, worries. Of Sons of Apollo. Um, yeah, um, but uh, w w what's, uh, yeah, yeah, it, um, apart from that, uh, I think with instrumental music, as we, uh, as you established, and as we all know, I think that there's, uh, it's always hard to, to get gigs together that, um, make sense, especially for, like, so many, if you, if you put together an all-star group, like yours are most often, um, and then fly them over to Europe and, and, and all that. It's just uh, a very much a niche um, genre, um, this instrumental fusion stuff. But yeah, I think with Planet X, as you also said, you feel absolutely feel that uh, that underground uh, legend that has been brewing and gro growing throughout these last 20 years. So um, yeah, maybe that would, there would be enough demand to, to warrant a uh, a, a tour or at least a couple of live gigs don't you think absolutely uh i think it, it would uh i think the first step is all of us getting together having a conversation and try to maybe write some new music and do a new record and then re-release all the old records and do like a box set or something like that and then make it special and then book a tour well in advance and plan it And, and really make something special out of it. So I'm totally down for that. Virgil is, is down for it. We just need to sit down and figure it out next year. That, that sounds absolutely amazing. I think there, there will be a lot of uh, people who, who would be absolutely happy about that, about hearing uh, new, crazy uh, Planet X stuff as well. Uh, but It's going to be hard to relearn all <laughs> the, that material. Those songs, yeah. up, man, that's hard stuff to play, even 20 years ago. Well, you can't imagine, or I can't imagine, as I, um, yeah, I'm I'm not a keyboard player and uh, or a drummer, and uh, my my musical uh, uh, abilities are uh, f far uh, far away from from those you would need uh, from what you guys been doing. But then, who who who? Uh, Who can say of themselves that they can play this stuff easily? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's tough. It's very difficult, very advanced. But yeah, uh, we will uh, see about all of that in the beginning of next year. We hope to hear about uh, that when the time is right. Uh, but for now, of course, there's the new Derek Sherinian solo album, called The Phoenix out on Inside Out Music with amazing guests as always. We already mentioned almost all of them. The bass players are amazing as always, of course, as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of great music to um, to keep us company in these, in these weird times, even though it's not live, but... It's new studio stuff from Derek Shurinian and his friends. Um, thank you, Derek, for, for being on the show, for being on the broadcast. That was a, a great talk. 
Um, thank and- you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And thank you for your support throughout the years. And thank you for uh, spreading the word about the Phoenix. I think any fan of uh, great music and certainly instrumental music will love this record. I have some of the greatest musicians in the world playing on here. Simon Phillips, Steve Vai, Joe Bonamassa, Zach Wilde, Bumblefoot, Kiko, Billy Sheehan, Tony Franklin. And so there's a little something for everybody on the Phoenix, and I hope you enjoy it. All right. Yeah, that leaves uh, me with our final words for the show, as always. Take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and listen to great instrumental music. The broadcast is a production of Stuas Media and is recorded at the Moonbase Studios in Munich. It is produced by Randy M. Salo, Janine Stengel-Lewis, Blake Lewis, Kai Metzner, and Dario Albrecht. Our theme music is by This Is Not An Elephant. Fantastic. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.